All right, guys, welcome back. How's everyone doing today? We got Puck U back at you. Uh, we are Why Lose Sports NHL Wagering Podcast. Hope everyone is doing very well today. I'm Mike Burns along with our NHL handicapper, Les Victory. We got three games on the card that we're going to look at for you tonight. Let's check in with Les, see how we did last night. How the heck you doing, brother? Can you imagine if you had spent 250 bucks for a ticket at Madison Square Garden last night and you're like, oh, I got time to go take that last piss or grab another beer and you know i might miss the fucking puck drop or whatever you know big deal and then you get to your seat and you see the yard sale of equipment <laughs> on the ice eight guys go into the room and oh my god i just what what the fuck what happened can you imagine like what that would feel like being a fan paying that kind of money to go watch a game there because it's not it's not it's not a cheap place to go and watch a game but not at all you know what? It's funny because yesterday I called it opening face off Rempe uh, McDermott. I, 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 I said it was going to happen. What I didn't see was a full on line. Everyone ball. else getting in. Yes. And what was Laviolette crying about? Like, you know, because he had one of his top four D's on the ice that, you know, I think it was Dumba that got, that got in, into no, the. Uh, Keandre Miller. Oh yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, he was all up in a, up in arms yelling at fucking your new fucking head coach. Green. But even Travis Green was saying at the end of the game, he's like, I don't know what the fuck he was pissed off about. Yeah, like I'm everybody knew this back. was going to happen. Yeah. You know, this is not a surprise of what, what just went down. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. Uh, but either way it had to happen. I didn't think it had to happen that way, but you know, the fans love seeing line brawls, especially when none of the players get hurt. That's the last thing you want. And that's how, you know, that conversation of does fighting get kicked out of the game once and for all when you see shit like that happen. But nobody got hurt. Uh, kind of surprised that all those guys, why did they all get tossed? Is that I don't know a why new they rule? Them all. Like, like, why? But they didn't toss everyone. They only kicked out eight. It's not like they kicked out all 10. Well, two of the guys Jimmy, didn't really Lazari fight, did they? they? It's not like Lazar and Jimmy VC really throw the nucks too much. You know, yeah. they more just kind of wrestled each other down. But but who gives a shit? What does it matter? Right? Uh, Everybody yeah. was involved. Hand out. You, you want to get rid of McDermott and Rempe, right, to, like, calm things down? Sure. They're fucking two goon shows, right? Get out of here, guys. Everybody else, a 10-minute misconduct. Get back in the game. I mean, the ice time that was locked last night by everyone oh else. God. I think Luke Hughes played almost 35 minutes last night. Yeah, he did. He was, like, 32 and change or whatever. And can you imagine being on the bench and being like, ah, oh, fuck, everybody just got tossed. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> I'm not getting benched tonight. I better go out and have a good game because now I got I got a window here. We're playing 4D all night. We're going to be on the ice half the fucking night. Yeah, it was a hell of a game, man. I mean, in classic New Jersey fashion, of course, they shit the bed, walk into the third period up, come out on the losing end. Uh, we did hit on the Jack Hughes and Panarin. Uh, point total. Both of those guys got on the board. I think Panarin had three points overall in that game. Um, we also had the, uh, we were talking about the lightning shit pump in the Leafs last night. I thought that was going to be a little bit of a closer matchup. Um, but one thing that I did not see at all was the five, nothing drumming that the Dallas stars took to the Edmonton Oilers last night. What a fucking game by Jake Allen, or Jake uh, Ottinger. Man, he's been red hot, and we were talking shit about him a little bit. What was it, last week or the week before? Because he wasn't good. He looked very uncomfortable in the net. He looked like he was, you know, forcing it a little bit too much. He was he wasn't his calm, cool, collected self. And uh, you know, good for him to you know get things back on on track. Big game for him. Uh, we did have the over saves on uh, on Picard. Uh, Picard. Uh, that did cash because I kind of expected a lot of shots from Dallas. And I also expected them to, you know, definitely let in a few. I didn't see five here, but I definitely saw a few. So we just just made that bet cash, which is nice. But yeah, Jake Ottinger, 35 save shutout against the Edmonton Oilers. Not something you see very often. Uh, good on you by calling out Jamie Ben for an ATG. Hit that guy over there. And then uh, we also caught the Connor Ingram for the card. Last night he was over saves. No, under saves was Ingram, correct? Correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the three games that we're looking at tonight, we have a classic matchup more than 15 years in the making. Pittsburgh against Washington. Pittsburgh, 
in my opinion, a little bit of a surprise. Uh, or opened up at plus 102. Washington at home, minus 122. Now it's just a straight pick them where it really should be. Over, under here, set at six. Um, you know, honestly, man, like a month ago, who the fuck would have saw this this coming? Washington in the in the wild card number two spot with 82 points and the fucking Pittsburgh Penguins with 79 points, three points behind them. What a fucking playoff implication matchup going on here. Uh, these teams are uh, Pittsburgh is five, three and two in their last 10 seven times. The over has hit there. I mean, this team certainly has found their rhythm man, and it's led by who else? Sid the kid. Yeah. And it's incredible because you watch him play and he, he it doesn't look like he does a ton out there, you know, unless he, the puck is, at him he does he just looks so much more relaxed out there he just knows where to be and when to be there and he's excellent around the net right like some of his tip ins that he kind of just chops at and you know he, he tips them in uh top shelf uh it, those are set plays that he is exceptional at and obviously he's quite a big impact on on the power play but the interesting thing with this is is i was telling you earlier when Malkin and Crosby get on the score sheet, they are three. The, the Pittsburgh Penguins are three hundred games over five hundred. <laughs> like that's absolutely insane. So if Crosby and Malkin get on the score sheet in the first period, and Washington scores two to tie it up, dump the farm on Pittsburgh to win this game because <laughs> that's just what the stats show us. That is an absolute insane number. I don't think that number will be touched ever again by a duo uh, to create that many wins uh, when they both get on the score sheet. But you know what? This is a great game, though. Everybody loves Ovechkin Crosby. You know, that's been my generation. That's been your generation. Well, you're a little bit older than I am. But de definitely part of your main hockey watching. Uh, and it's what everybody wants to see. They want to see the two big dogs clash at it again. I think we see both teams step up to the occasion here. I am worried for Pittsburgh because technically Washington is obviously in a better space uh, in the standings, but it can still change quick. Washington does have a game at hand. So if Pittsburgh goes in, this is Pittsburgh's season right here. Okay, yeah. If they win this game, they could still make it. If they lose this game, I think it's safe to say that they're going to, they're, they're not going to make it. And which should have been the case anyway <laughs> two weeks ago even last week we wrote them off we wrote them off and now people are talking about them again okay maybe they're being blown out of proportion a little bit like what they, they they won what is it uh I mean, they really have five. just played 500 hockey you know so it's not like they've done anything you know super special i mean they did beat the rangers they did beat the devils the other day that kind of springboarded them into this position here um, so I think they are making a little bit of a story of a story, but you still, when you're three points out and you got five games left, you're in the fucking thick. hundred percent, hundred percent. And the way Washington has been playing, you know, maybe their goaltending is officially kind of dried up. Maybe Charlie Lindgren is, you know, kind of pulling a UPL now and kind of falling back into the ways. And, you know, I really like the story of Nadelkovich because he's, he fights hard. Like he, he, you could just see his effort and I can see him being a big part of this Pittsburgh lineup going forward. I know he's uh he's, he's not a very old guy. I forgot, I forgot how old he is, but he, he's just a young guy coming up in it and he's going to be a big part of this Pittsburgh team going forward. And when he gets on, man, well, he, he, we would know because he, he fucking stole a couple up from New Jersey the other night uh, that even had the announcers kind of going, Holy man, how the fuck did he say that? Yeah, Nadelkovich has been 4-0-1 in his last five, 2.20 goals against a 9-2-1 save percentage. Um, and then you're right about Charlie Lindgren, man. He has, you know, shown some regression here from where earlier in the year, uh, earlier in the year, you know, steals the job from Dar Darcy Kemper, but he's definitely cooled off in his last 10. Um, you know, in his last nine, he's three, he's five, three, and one with a three, one, three, and an eight, nine, nine. I mean, I uh, I don't think that this is going to be much of a goalie show, um, you know, given given just kind of like the the temperature of the room, let, let's call it. I mean, you know, Sid is just 
been absolutely on fire. And whenever these two teams meet, it's like everybody gets up for these kinds of games. I mean, for, in his career, Sid has 31 goals, 59 apples, and 70 games, uh, you know, against uh, Washington, you know, OV straight up. Um, so they've already met each other three times previously in this year. Sid's got three goals and one assist. Um, you know, Mal Malkin's been playing well. He's been playing a lot better. He's only six goals away from 500, so he's going to be gripping the stick a little bit more, you know, really trying to get on that score sheet. Uh, he's got five points this year against Washington. Uh, Brian Rust has been on fire for Pittsburgh. Um, he's got seven goals, six assists in his last 10 games. I mean, it. neither one of these, I mean, I'd probably say Washington plays a better defensive game than Pittsburgh does, um, but I, I just see, I see the, the lamp getting lit up a lot tonight, man. I think it's really important for Pittsburgh to focus on positional play in this game because if they don't, they're going to get caught taking penalties. And Washington's power play has been probably one of the best in the league as of late. Like they, They've only not scored a power play goal in three out of their last ten. And some of these games have multiple power play goals. So this is not a team that you want to take a bunch of penalties – Probably not going to see a line brawl to start this one. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Crosby and Ovechkin drop the mitts as soon as the puck drops. That would set the tone. As long as they don't get tossed. Give them five. Fucking let them back out there. <laughs> well, this game does have a lot of like, you know, a lot of history. And this really is like a props galore. I was talking to you before we jumped on here, man. I mean, Dylan Strom is leading the league, uh, leading the caps in points this year. He's got four assists against Pittsburgh. Um, just this year alone, he's got seven points in his last eight games. Tommy Wilson makes his way back into the lineup tonight um, after serving his three game or no, but that was what he get. He got a six game sussy, um, but he's coming back into the lineup tonight. Um, he's at plus 300 anytime goal. Um, he was riding a little bit of a hot streak, you know, three point game streak uh, before uh, he got his suspension and he scored two goals against Pittsburgh in three games this year. So he's plus 120 for a point plus 300. For ATG, I like Tommy Wilson getting back into that lineup and making an impact um, for Washington tonight. So definitely going to be an interesting matchup, man. Um, I think at the end of the day, I think Pittsburgh steals this one. You know, they're just a little bit too hot right now. Always got to go with the hot hand. I think Washington makes it a fight. Ovi will probably get, probably get one or two piss missiles from his office, you know, on the power play. Um, so this is going to be a hell of a game. And I'm definitely going to have my eyes all over it. No, it's good. it's definitely exciting. And it's always good to see games like this. And you, whenever you get a rivalry of two superstars, future Hall of Famers clash in what is kind of uh, an important game. I mean, it's still going to be difficult for Pittsburgh to get into the show here. But uh, when there's uh, where, where there's a little glimmer of hope, and you got two big dogs going at it, you got to love it because you just don't know how much longer we're going to be able to get that, right? What is Sid going to play? Another two, three years? Same with Ovi. Like they're probably going to retire at the same time and walk off in the sunset holding hands together. Like that's it's, it's the kind of career these two guys have had, right? All right. Second game on our card tonight. We're going to be looking at the Avalanche against the Wild in Minnesota. Colorado's the road favorites here at minus 165. Minnesota plus 135 over under it's six and a half here. Um, you know, I really wanted to talk about this game because I I don't think this is really just a straight up and down easy kind of game here. I mean, Colorado has slipped up lately a little bit. Um, they've dropped three of their last four. They're seven, two, and one over the last 10 in general. Uh, they had a big win against uh against Nashville where they were down four to two, came back to win that seven four, but then they followed it up with a stinker against Columbus. You know, we're in a letdown game four to one. Um, Colorado's like stuck right in the middle here. They're chasing Dallas by four points. They got the Jets right behind them who will be in action tonight uh, with four points. And we're going to see a Noonan in, uh, in net tonight. He's been a very serviceable backup lately. Uh, last five, three and two, two, one, seven and a nine, two, five. Did take the ugly losses last week against Montreal, against Columbus. But do you think he has a bounce back spot here? Or how do you, how do you see the, 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 the avalanche looking right now? So I didn't see many of the games that they, that he played, and I kind of wanted to because I wanted to watch him. I wanted to see what these goals against look like because he's only getting, uh, even uh, Gorgia, they're only getting like 22 to 25, 27 saves 
per game. So it's not like they're just getting pounded and pounded and pounded by shots. I'm like, that's just not what Colorado does. They don't give up those kind of opportunities. But you got to expect to have better goaltending, no matter how, shape, or form. And I think a lot of this is is the defensive crew on its own, too. So not to single out the goalies on its own. I think it's the entire five guys in front of them. Uh, you know, I found the games that I do watch of Colorado, they can turn the puck over in their own end. They do lose those battles on the wall sometimes. The blue lines seem to be difficult sometimes. And when things are going that way, eventually it ends up in your net. Ask the Devils. They know. They're the king of fucking turnovers, and that's why they're not making the playoffs. Now, one interesting thing is, is even though Colorado has lost three out of their last four, they're still peppering goalies with with shots. Like, they're still averaging, like, 36 shots a game. And they've done a really good job of increasing that productivity on the road recently. Uh, I think we actually faded them earlier in March on the road because they, they they couldn't win on the road if their life depended on it at one point. And uh, they ended up winning four straight on the road, and they're all averaging over 34, 35 shots and against good teams like Edmonton and Vancouver. So uh, it's I feel like this is a get-right spot for Colorado because of it. Um, not a bad price either. It's not often we get to see Colorado under 200 unless they're playing, you know, Dallas or, or whatever, but I don't know. It's going to come down to goaltending for Colorado. And, you know, if a Noonan can be a little bit better, if he can be a little bit better, the forwards will, should take care of it. Like it's not very often you hold Colorado to only one or two goals uh, against and yet, that's kind of what has happened over the last three out of four games. They, 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 you know, four-one against Columbus, three-two against the Rangers. They lost, and then they lost to obviously that Montreal, which kind of started this whole thing to begin mm-hmm. with, right? So that kind of might have been our indication that, oh man, maybe this is the time to turn. And we say it all the time when teams go on big runs, there's always that pullback. They won what, six in a row, seven in a row, and then now they've lost three out of four. So it's just wild how quickly it turns around. Well, I mean, like, you know, we're we're witnessing it in Florida right now, man. You know, I mean, you know, Florida's on the slate tonight. We'll see if they can get right in a spot. I mean, Colorado against Minnesota this year, they've already played two games. Um, It was a 2-1 overtime win and a 3-2 victory by Colorado, both games. Um, You know, Minnesota 6-1-3 and in their last 10. They're eight points out of the final wild card. So I, I'll put the fork in them. I don't think that they're going to make it, um, you know, but like the struggles in Minnesota isn't necessarily defense. So that's why I kind of see this as an interesting matchup, you know, to see if they can actually, you know, keep Nate dog and company down. Um, they're, they're a big problem in scoring goals, man. You know, they, they, in the last 10, they put up 2.7 goals, but only allowed 2.2, right? So the defense is there. The unders come out seven times in their last 10 games. I mean, outside of Kirill the Thrill, who has been absolutely on fire. Uh, he's got 11 goals and 20 points in his last uh, in his last 11 games. Um, he had three points against Colorado this year already. But, I mean, outside of him, man, I mean, Boldy's been quiet and inconsistent. Hartman's got the suspension. He's not be playing tonight. Um, Erickson X ha- has been has been quiet. One goal and two assists in his last five games. I think Polino's out tonight too. I think he's hurt. I I mean, so it's it's one of those things. Is there anybody else in Minnesota that can step up, or is Kirill really this kind of Nate kind of guy where he can put the team on his back, wake everybody up, and get a couple fucking no. power play goals here, or you know, no? Because look, look at okay, sure, they're six one and three, like you said. Okay, but let's let's look at this. They beat Ottawa, they beat San Jose, they beat Anaheim twice, and Arizona. <laughs> so five of those wins have come from the worst teams in the NHL. So sure, there's six, one, and three, but they lost to Vegas, they lost to St. Louis twice. You know, they're they're not w- winning games. They got pumped, shit kicked by LA, which is the Six only nine. real team that they played recently. Six zip the other night, and uh, you know, so I, I'm not giving Minnesota a lot of credit. 
because their schedule has been relatively easy. And this is going to be a much different pace than playing Ottawa, uh, San Jose, and uh, Anaheim recently. Well, Gustafson's going to get the call in the net for Minnesota. He's been hot lately. He's 2-1-1 one one with a 108 and a 963. Uh, we'll, we'll see how this guy comes out. But either way, I do think this is going to be a tight game. Uh, you know, Minnesota does, you know, do a, a decent job defensively. So they'll be able to slow him down a little bit. Um, I could see this being a one goal game um, at the end of the day, probably in Colorado's favor. But I wouldn't be completely shocked if Minnie doesn't pull out, you know, maybe an overtime victory or something like that. I think maybe a week ago when that buzz was there. And they were vibrating and, you know, the, you could really feel the energy there. But I, I don't know. I don't know if I I don't know if I believe in them. So we'll see who's right. Could be you. Could be me. I don't know. No, who am I kidding? It'll be me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to another team that's buzzing and vibrating out there. We have Boston walking into Raleigh. Carolina is just looking like a fucking wagon right now. Boston is plus 130, Carolina minus 150, over under here at five and a half. This is the second meeting of the year between these two. Carolina took the first one down three to two. Um, Boston is six and four in their last 10. They beat up Nashville three nothing and snuck by Washington um, in a shootout. Their last two out. I mean, you know, you know how I kind of feel about Boston, man. You know, I, I'm not scared of them. I think through that second tier kind of team, their offense is just meh, you know, 2.9 goals per game averaging 27 shots over the last 10. I, I don't, I don't think Boston has a chicken dicks chance in hell at this one, man. What do you think? <laughs> I had to laugh when you said uh, the wagon in Carolina, because That's last time you one. said Buffalo was the wagon, they fucking ended up losing like four games in a row after their little. So is this the wagon curse? Am I going to burn another fucking hat? <laughs> I had to burn Detroit's hat. No, Detroit, burn. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> Uh, Buffalo, and now it's fucking Carolina. So with that On being said, the hurricanes, baby. Sorry, underdog Carolina, bet of the I night. <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know what? I I believe in Rod Brendamore and what he's done with that team. He is just a. He's probably one of the most scariest coaches in the NHL because you look at what he does and his energy on the bench and his eyes get about four times the size of normal size when, you know, things aren't going his way or, or he, he doesn't like something. So a real, really good guy to have on the bench. I can see Carolina winning a cup with Brenda Moore behind the bench. I don't know if it's going to be this year. Obviously it won't be tonight, but what I do have to give credit for Carolina is they've just been so consistent with their goaltending as of late. And I think that, has been a problem for Boston lately. It's either really good or very par. And lately it's been better, but it wasn't long ago where they were giving up three, four plus goals a game. And it's tough to beat teams when you're doing that, but they're, they still found a way to win games when they were giving up, you know, three, four, four goals. So you got to give Boston some credit. I agree. They play kind of a, a weird game where they don't get a ton of opportunities. Like they, they, they don't get a ton of pucks on net, which is surprising because you think they would. If, you know, with that kind of winning win record, that kind of position in the standings, you go, like, oh man, these guys must be just dumping quality shots on net every game. And it's just, it hasn't been the case for them. So, I can see Boston being in a letdown spot in the playoffs. I, I, I agree with you. And I don't know why I don't have the words to describe why I feel that way. But you know what? Going into Raleigh, Carolina is on a couple days rest, which could suggest that they might come out a little flat, just not being on the ice for a couple days. Boston's on a pretty lengthy road trip here where they're, this is uh, game number six on the road. Uh, you know, it's a lot of hockey on the road and they've, they've had a tough schedule. They've had Tampa, they've had Florida, they've had Nashville and they took care of a lot of them. Right. So, you know, I, I did at a dollar 25, I wouldn't mind putting a little bit money on Boston, you know, expect to lose it. But if it hits, it may, it's, it makes sense because they are one of the top teams in the East, no matter how you shake it. So anytime you can get a top team in the East or West at even or plus money, 
it's almost hard to say no. I think Boston has, if I'm not mistaken, I think they have Swayman going between the pipes tonight. Um, he's going to line up against Freddie Anderson. Freddie Anderson has been fucking lights out since returning from that that weird uh, blood clot issue that he had um, earlier in the season. I mean, you know, Carolina is just like, I don't know, man. It, it's tough for me to look at even, even a team like Florida, right? And I understand they're going through their – their moans and their groans right now. And, you know, and then maybe they'll get it together. Maybe they won't for the playoff push. Um, but I just see Carolina as a team like fucking Dallas, man, just complete. You know, like they they got Jake Gensel at the at the all-star break. I mean, he's only had three goals, but he's had 14 assists in 11 games. His line has not sc been scored on in all 11 games. He has not been on the ice in 11 games to give up a goal. And I mean, they're they're eight one and one in their last ten back to back shutouts. I I don't know, man. I I don't see one getting snuck by here. I don't know. Yeah, the, the goaltending is what's going to get you get you there. But one thing I do want to mention, I want to shout out to Justin Brazil, as he's from New Liskard, Ontario, Canada, and which is about an hour an hour from me. I don't know if you know much about this kid, but he got called up for the Bruins. He's six fucking seven or something crazy. Six, six, five. Yeah, he's, he's six, five. He came into the league. Uh, he's played 19 games now. He had seven points. And those seven points came in the first few games that he, you know, actually played. Uh, and But unfortunately, he got hurt. But he was a big physical guy for Boston. And with him being out, it's definitely going to have an impact on that Boston team because a lot. A lot of Boston is kind of soft. Like even Marshawn's getting kind of soft in his old ratty age. Like he's not doing his shiesty little shit like he used to, uh, you know, the past few years. So it's they're getting soft. They're gonna miss. They're gonna miss him. And uh, a team like Carolina, you just want to bang them. You gotta bang them. You gotta run into them. You gotta hit them. You gotta, you know, slow them down because really good teams don't like to be hit, and you you will wear them out. So I don't know if Boston's going to be able to steal this one on the road, but I still like the plus money here because of, you know, really statistically Boston is just as good, if not better of a team than Carolina on paper. Paper. Who reads paper. that shit? I don't. It's all pictures for me. <laughs> well, prop side, I mean, obviously you got to keep your eye on pasta. I mean, him and Zaka have just been absolutely clicking. If you want to put those guys together, you know, we talked about Gensel, 14 or 14 points in 11 games. Um, he's he's almost automatic for a point um, playing with Sebastian Ajo, who's really elevated his game to a new kind of level um, that we weren't sure if he actually had it. You know, there's been a lot of talk about him the last couple of years. Is he the guy? And, you know, we'll see how this game goes. I think it'll be a I think it'll be a close one. I think it'll be tight, low scoring. But I think Carolina pulls it away at the end of it. We shall see. All right, guys. Another one down for you. Make sure you guys get over to Why Lose. Grab some packages. $49 days, $99 weeks, buck ninety-nine for the rest of the season, all the way up until New Jersey not hoisting the fucking cup anymore. Carolina, new favorite team, engaged. Sorry, Canes fans. The wagon had, had to do it to you. <laughs> uh, make sure you guys smash that like button subscribe put your notifications on follow us on all of our social media channels say stay close eye on telegram for up to the minute news on all less's packages how are we looking for tonight on the card buddy we got a full card again we had a really good night last night we made over three thousand dollars in profit uh you know what the funny part is is we only finished three and three we won three and lost three but we lost the right ones. We lost the long shot ones. We lost the parlay, unfortunately. Uh, but we won the ones that we want to win. And when we win those ones, you're always going to be green. So that's why I don't like, I get messages all the time. What's your record? You know, the record is not important. What's important is ROI. So even though we were 500 yesterday with our record, uh, we still made, I think, 26% you know, on the day. So, you know, that compounds over the month. And I think we're up, you know, 27% over the season so far. So that's what's really important is that ROI. It's a long game. Like everybody knows, you know, I'm the only asshole putting my mortgage out there. But it's not every day that you have Montreal against Florida. You know, <laughs> you, you got to play smart. Bet with your heads. Never above it. Guys, enjoy your hockey tonight. Have some fun. We'll catch you back over here tomorrow. Take care.